All right, guys, let's see here. We, we got it streaming back again now. So let me just see if we can't get this going right here. I had a little glitch here that I needed to get past here. Um, I'll just, I'll have to come back to this uh, prophetic segment a little bit later there. I had an issue there and then I also had an issue here on the, on the screen as well. So I apologize for that. So let, let me just kind of, let's recap. Let's go back to the beginning of this because I also want to make sure that we get this loaded on YouTube for those that will be watching tonight in YouTube as well. And that is, we were speaking originally about Russia, that the United States is saying that Russia is the, is, is considered the greatest threat for the United States right now. And of course, my position on that is, is that the reason why that's becoming a threat is because uh, United, the United States with NATO and their allies, we are constantly provoking uh, Russia at this point here in the actions that the United States is doing, <coughs> especially that in East, in East Europe. Um, and then we have also the, the sanctions that have been placed on Russia. Um, that is crippling the country there. There's a lot of things that we are doing here in the United States as far as the Obama administration. It's not, I don't think it's the sentiment of everyone that's there, but that is provoking the situation with Russia that could easily spiral out of control. Um, there's only so long Russia is going to take this. And at the same time, there's been some uh, commentators that have actually stated that Obama needs a war with Russia in order to, to guarantee that the United States dollar stays as the, the world uh, reserve currency. Uh, so there's a lot of issues that are at play here. We have built up a, an enormous amount of, uh, of military equipment and even troops and trainings, not only in Ukraine, but in Poland and some of the uh, former Soviet states there in East Europe. And this clearly is a provocation to Russia. And of course, Russia has responded uh, by bringing in more intercontinental ballistic missiles. There have been cat and mouse games played quite a bit between the two of them. And, uh, and just a lot of rhetoric going back and forth. And I, I can only imagine that this bear can only, is only going to be pushed for so long before he actually does something. Um, you know, but, but nonetheless, we also know that Russia plays a major role, too, in uh, the demise of Israel in the latter days, but God will actually intervene for Israel uh, in this particular battle. But it's interesting to note that the Scripture says that he'll be drug out. Uh, he'll, God will put a hook in his jaw and bring him down. So in that regards there, it lets us know that Russia is not so much provoking a battle, if God has to put a hook in his jaw to bring him down, uh, to the battle, but, you, but rather is drawn into to, to a confrontation. Um, I don't per, per, personally would not want to live in communism, uh, but nonetheless, um, I don't think that we have a right just to sit there and continually to agitate this bear uh, the way the United States is doing. And of course, we have to look at the flip side of this, and this is something I was sharing with my own family this evening. And that is that this nation that once was a Christian nation, and I know there's still many Christians in the nation here, but at one time it was a praying nation. It was a people here that really loved and believed God. And they, would, they had the all-night prayer meetings. They really uh, sincerely sought the Lord with all of their heart, and it was a godly nation. But look at the nation now. I mean, the, the godly nation that once was does not even mention the name of God you know, the, the name of Yeshua is never mentioned. Not even the name Jesus is mentioned in any political gatherings or political meetings. Uh, it's just not done. I mean, some people might get the audacity to pray, but they're not going to mention the name of Jesus whatsoever. And yet it's supposed to be a Christian nation. Far from it, I can guarantee you that. Um, and then what can we expect? I mean, if you think about it, the nation here is just like Israel. And... If God would not allow Israel to get by with her sins, and Israel, you have to keep in mind, when Yeshua come on the scene, Israel appeared to be the most religious nation there was. They, they, the religious was not the problem with, with, with Israel. When Yeshua come, they were very religious. Today, there's still many religious people in this nation as well. But the problem is the fundamentals of their faith and their belief in uh, Yeshua, in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
and, and, and to bring about the principles and the laws in this land, they have backslidden from that. What happened with Israel in her time frame? We had Rome that was in there that was ruling the nation, and the priests were willing to sell out to the Romans. In fact, when they had the opportunity to accept Yeshua, they had the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ to be their king, then they cried out and said, we have no king but Caesar. They wanted a Roman pontiff over them. And that's exactly what the United States has done in their own political circles. They've had the opportunity to accept that Jesus Christ would have been king of this country and it would have been, and it would have been a, a blessed nation. But instead, they sold out to the political uh, fanfare instead. The people are not interested any longer in Christ running this nation. A, little, a, a small majority, yes. But where is the all-night prayer meetings? Where is the, 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 the people that once stood and would have declared the name of Jesus Christ in a, in, a, in a congressional assembly? They've long gone out, and it's obvious. Even the, the Supreme Court justices. You know, our, our judges in this country are based on the judges of Israel. But just like the judges of Israel, they finally begin to take bribes and everything else. It's no different in this nation as well. And so therefore, what can we expect? God, once Christ was rejected with Israel, what did God do? He destroyed the nation. It only took about 40 years. Actually, it was 70 years, I guess, because we, we look at it from the time of uh, the time changed. You know, um, we have uh, A.D. after his death and B.C. before Christ. So the A.D., actually took 70 years for that nation, for, for, for Israel to come down and be destroyed. Now, when America was still a praying nation, and we can go back, say, maybe to the 40s and 50s, um, and things of that nature there. I know we're having a problem with streaming, so we'll be on YouTube, guys. But the, back when this country was truly, revivals broke out, all the way back to Azusa Street, when the revivals were breaking out there, but here we are in 2015. Now, I don't know where God's going to count that 70-year mark like Israel, and I don't think it has to necessarily be a 70-year mark, but the point is, is God is sick and tired of this country that it has thrown Christ out, and they rejected Him altogether, and now you have the Supreme Court puts in gay marriage. An abomination in the sight of God. You know, if you go back, for example, if you were to read the book of Adam and Eve, just read the book of Adam and Eve one time. And what does it say in there about Adam and Eve? When the sons of Seth came along and they go down and you read that story in there from that book there, it's very interesting just to look at it. Because remember, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And what was it like during the days of Adam and Eve? The Homosexuality in that book is clearly, it says that the men would kiss in their own faces. It talked about the unspeakable ungodliness that men were doing with men. It's written in our Bible as well. See? And it was just sexual affairs constantly of every kind of sort. Do you know it says that the women that came up that were Cain's children were tattoos all up their body and even into their face. I'm not saying a Christian that gets saved that didn't have tattoos in the past. I'm not condemning that, but the point is, is I'm showing you how it was then, so is it now. And Congress won't even mention the name of Jesus Christ, neither will the Senate. And the judges we have today are all crooked and, and with bribes and everything else. That's all throughout the land. They have chosen Caesar over the true God of Israel. And Caesar today is the Pope of Rome. And the Pope of Rome is calling on what? Homosexuality to be legalized. Not to mention a whole slew of other filthy ideas that he's got in mind. So, 
It's sad to see that the country has come to that situation. And then we say, then, then the news broadcasters say today that Russia is our greatest threat. No, our, our greatest threat is ourselves. God will bring judgment upon our nation from somewhere. If he brought it upon Israel because Israel rejected Jesus Christ and took Caesar and the United States has rejected Jesus Christ, but they will take the Pope of Rome. Interesting, isn't it? So 70 years after Yeshua was rejected, then the Pope of Rome came on the scene. Caesar. Titus came and destroyed the city. I'm just using it as an analogy, not an, an, an actuality when I say that. But in our day, they rejected Jesus Christ. They won't mention the name of Yeshua nowhere in any of the congressional meetings, the Senate meetings, the House floor, the judges or anything. But you know what they will do? You'll bring the Pope of Rome in there. You'll have him speak from your house floor. And you'll call him the Holy Father. They'd rather have the Pope of Rome than they would the very God of heaven that came and gave his life for them. That's what Israel did too. So if Putin does come and strikes this nation, it'll be no different than when God brought Titus, the Roman general, down to Israel and took Israel into captivity. It's prophesied as well. Many of the writings that we have here, it is prophesied that the people will go into captivity. It's only a matter of time. And the thing is, is we must repent. And those that do still stand for the God of Israel, for His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, it is time that we go back and we serve Him. There's got to be, you have, you have to remember, even though Israel was done things that happened the way they did, the apostles were still there. The apostles still carried the gospel of Yeshua to the world. So, the only thing I can say, and, and I know we've lost our feet on live stream. It's kind of interesting we lost our stream there. So I trust that this will come out okay on YouTube. But we've got to, we've got to pray and seek Him sincerely. And we don't want to be caught away with every wind of doctrine. And we don't want to be caught away with every sensation or, or dream or our so-called visions and stuff like that, we want to truly seek the Lord with all of our heart. Because we need to be ready for when His judgment comes, we want to be found in His mercy. I trust this is a blessing for you tonight as we close out this particular broadcast. God bless you. And pray for us. We certainly need your prayers. And we need your help as well in this ministry as we try to bring you what is truth and as we take the fight to the front lines both in Eastern Europe and as well as in Israel. We love you. God bless you. Visit our website, israelinewslive.org or israelreturns.com and see the, check out the things that we do there for you, the postings that we place as well. Some of the, in fact, some of these recordings, because of Sister Therese, we're able to post these uh, for you, uh, word for word, on our website. They're trans, uh, transcribed there, and so we try to get them up. Uh, here and there, we're getting some of these up for you so you can go back, for, especially for those that have trouble being able to uh, watch it, that can only read, or, or maybe a, someone that is deaf, but yet could read. Direct them there. Let them know. On our website, both Israeli News Live and Israel Returns, you can actually see a lot of the transcribed messages there. And we thank Sister Torres for doing that for us and with her love and diligence that she's been so faithful in bringing these out for us. God bless you and good evening.